Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? Ben the Bane Davis back here, and the GOAT has retired. He's laid down the gloves, will no longer compete in mixed martial arts, and is moving on. And you're probably thinking, the GOAT, John Jones, is done? No, it's Demetrius Johnson. It's Mighty Mouse. He has strung up the boots and called it a career. Uh, one championship had an event in Denver yesterday, 168, and on that broadcast, Demetrius came out for a very special segment. So without further ado, let's just see what Mighty Mouse has career. To say. And before I, you know, do the big announcement, I know y'all want to see your boy, you know, get in there. Whoop, whoop, ass, but first, you know, I want to uh, say thank you to, uh, give me this mic, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> First off, uh, I want to say thank you so much to the fans. You guys have always been amazing to me to live out my dreams and show my passion through martial arts. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of my teammates from the very beginning, back in 2006, all the way to 2024. It's been a long journey. Uh, thank you to uh, Matt. He's like my, he, thank you to Matt. Thank you to Matt. Thank you to uh, my wife. Thank you to my wife. Thank you to my children. My mother-in-law. Father-in-law. Fuck. Get it, dog. Yeah. Uh, thank you to you guys. You guys have made me a better person, a better athlete. Thank you to my wife for always encouraging me to pursue my passion, my dreams. Uh, thank you to everybody at One Championship, uh, the staff, the, the competition team, the social media team, all you guys should appreciate you. Thank you to Chaudhry for giving me the opportunity to uh, display my martial arts on this platform. And yeah, guys, like, like I said last time, Like I said last time, I sound like a damn mouse. <laughs> uh, like I said last time, when I came here to Denver, Colorado, I told you guys that was potentially my last fight, and I was not lying. Like, I am done. I am done competing in mixed martial arts. And I want to say thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity. Appreciate you guys. Oh, and. And thank you, thank, thank you to my dad. He's been in my life for the last eight years. He's been absolutely amazing. To my children, I love you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. You guys do whatever you want in life. As long as you guys are good people. My wife, I love you. Like, and yeah. I love it. I love it. What a sweet send off. What a nice sentimental message. Thanking, largely thanking the people that are important to him that were influential in him continuing his mixed martial arts journey, both beginning, middle, and end of it. Just a beautiful message. Just a, a, a nice piece where, you know, he's all class. And I've seen a couple people that clowned on the voice breaks or, um, you know, the, the emotion, which is like, fuck off. <laughs> the dude's had a ridiculously long career in mixed martial arts. Can't even fathom how hard of a decision and moment it was to get in that ring and vocalize the end of what was one of the greatest careers in mixed martial arts history. So for the people that are taking shots at the, the vocal breaks, the cracks, the this, the that's, uh, fuck you. <laughs> uh, but I did want to take a special moment to talk about some of Demetrius's achievements because we talk about go, we talk about greatest of all time, but I feel Demetrius Johnson's biggest accolades and moments were several years ago, admittedly, right? And there might be this new wave of mixed martial arts fans that don't even comprehend what Demetrius did, myself included. I began watching in 2017. I got to see, I believe, the end Demetrius Johnson, Topology, 
So if you go back to 2017, um, ba, ba, ba. yeah, like right about when I started watching mixed martial arts um, and, and getting more involved as a fan was Wilson Hayes when he defended the belt. Ray Borg when he got the uh, you know the the whiz bar on him, and then the split decision to Henry Cejudo. I I believe I watched this fight. I'm pretty confident I watched it. But then he went to one championship and was there for the last five years. You know, it had some deeply memorable performances. The Rod Tang fight was historic. The Adriano Moraes you know, knockout was the only time he'd ever been finished in mixed martial arts. His entire career, he fought the best of the best. And the only time he was ever finished was a gigantic fucking uh, bantamweight uh, <laughs> in, in Adriano Moraes. And it is interesting how the odds completely shifted from minus 700 in their first match to minus 120, or minus 170. So um, if you're a betting man, then you probably looked at the second and third fight as good economic opportunities. Uh, but either way, you know, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't familiar. I was not around for his reign, his rise, the uh, clash with Cruz in 2011, which was a pretty historic fight, all things considered. So Aaron Bronstetter, amazing, go follow, best, one of the best in the business. Uh, he put together some fly rate records that are held by Mighty Mouse. To this day, remember, Demetrius Johnson has not, what is going on here? Demetrius Johnson has not competed in the UFC since August of 2018. That's six years ago. These records are still held by him. Most wins in the division. Most finishes in the division. Most submission wins at flyweight. Longest win streak at flyweight. Most title fight wins at 125 with 12. That's, that's not going to be beat, guys. No one is stringing together 12 wins or excuse me, 12 title fight wins. Uh, I like Pantoja a ton. I think he's a good champ. I like the activity. I like the fights that he has, but it's hard for me to fathom that he will make it to a dozen title fight wins and have a streak that could come close to matching Demetrius's. Fight night bonuses, nine. That's $450,000 minimum uh, for post-fight bonuses and recognition in, in, in that financial sense. And I say minimum because there's been times where the bonuses are hundred grand. there has been times where it's 75000 in the past decade, 15 years. So a lot of money. Average fight time, 18 minutes, 37 seconds. Total fight time, almost five hours inside the UFC's flyweight uh, octagon. Control time, 90 minutes of control time. Top position time, an hour of top position time. Significant strikes landed, 1,000. Right, just over a thousand significant strikes, big striking differential, uh, and then significant strike defense, sixty-eight percent. So literally, at almost a seventy percent clip, he's defending these shots, and uh, you know, he's just a legend. He's just a complete legend of the game. And the fact that these records are still there, uh, six years removed from his last UFC fight, is crazy. I mean, it it, it truly is remarkable. Um, and so if we go to this article by Forbes, they go over a little bit more detail about the career. So again, for those, I'm, I'm kind of making this video for myself and for those that aren't as familiar with Mighty Mouse um, and maybe would want just a, a, a deeper scratch of the surface on what he did and who he is. So this article by Forbes, he was the first ever UFC flyweight champion. So the inaugural 125-pound champion won the title in 2012 by beating Joseph Benavidez. Um, they rematched and he knocked out Joe, uh, a, a year later, 11 consecutive title defenses, six year run, defended the title 11 times. That's ridiculous. 11 time champ. Come on. Longest reigning UFC champion. So his reign of 2,142 days is the longest in promotional history. Um, that's, I mean, look, th that's, that's better than Jones. That's better than Silva. That's better than George St. Pierre, right? Uh, I think, how long was Anderson Silva's reign? Anderson, come on, let me Google. Let me Google. Anderson Silva UFC reign length? Uh, okay. So, <laughs> maybe, maybe not as long as Silva's at 2457. So, this Forbes article is not in 
entirely correct. Uh, maybe at the division, right? Longest reigning UFC flyweight champion. So nobody at 125 has matched that yet. Uh, submission of the year. The uh, the Ray Borg calls it the mouse trap. The uh, the 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 whiz bar. It's just a crazy one. I mean, lifts him up and then traps the arm. If you haven't seen it, you got to go see it. One championship flyweight Grand Prix winner in 2019. Uh, so first year, first full year that he was inside the company, he won the Flyweight Grand Prix. Um, and that's, I mean, that's just scratching the surface. I feel like that's not even covering uh, everything that he accomplished in mixed martial arts. We aren't even talking about the grappling accolades. We aren't even talking about what he's done in the last two years in the BJJ world. So the man is a consummate professional. He is a mixed martial artist through and through. Loves the game more than most and constantly learning, educating himself, educating others. That's what I love so much about Demetrius Johnson is the high IQ, the intellect. He's always absorbing, trying to better himself, his game, and those around him. So I just, you know, I, I, I don't have much more to say other than I wish I was around to see the dominance and those 11 consecutive defenses. I wish I was around to appreciate how dominant this guy was. People talk about John Jones and the dominance that he had. Demetrius Johnson is in that same category, that same conversation. Um, and then you have to tack on the fact that for many years, Dana, the UFC brass, hated the division, constantly underpromoted, constantly uh, worked against the 125ers to the point where it was almost shut down. If TJ Dillashaw was able to beat Henry Cejudo and become a double champion, claim the flyweight title, as well as holding the bantamweight belt, there is a high likelihood that the UFC would have scrapped the 125ers, which is a shame because now we have very exciting... You know, not that not that we didn't back at that time, but it's it's in a different platform. It's in a different filter now. When we get the Kai Kara Francis, the Steve Ursegs, the Pantoshas, who is a great champion, very active, very fun, um, excitement. It's one of the most exciting divisions, one of the highest, most technical divisions in the UFC. So I think there's a greater appreciation for the 125ers, and that simply would not exist without the work of Demetrius Johnson and what he did for both the division and the sport and those that are of the same stature, right, uh, that competed at that weight class. So um, it's truly historic what this man did. I, I don't think it can be stated enough or emphasized enough how impactful he was to mixed martial arts. Rarely can we say this. Rarely can we sit and say that somebody had a profound impact on the entire sport. Uh, but Demetrius Johnson did. That's exactly what Mighty Mouse did. So I've got nothing but high praise. I wish him the best in his retirement. I truly hope to see him continue competitions in BJJ. And, you know, I, 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 in terms of, like, other types of combat, if he wants to go box, you know, fantastic. Uh, I, I fully support him in that realm. But whatever he wants to do, I support it. Can't wait to see it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, um, you know, sh let's let, let me know down below. Favorite Mighty Mouse moment. Leave it down there. And uh, let's have a fun discussion. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.